Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It went from rainy and cruddy and not being able to put up windows to it being so cold and so snowy that we don't want to put up windows. So instead, I'm going to hang out with our new friends, Maya and Aladino from Sailing Magic Carpet. And they've joined us uh, all the way over here. They've flown over from the Mediterranean where it was nice and beautiful and are joining us here where it's cold and miserable. And they said they want to work really hard, but I don't. So we're going to go check out some, some sites here on Gabriella Island. So this is Maya and Aladino, and they, like I said earlier, have Magic Carpet. Magic Carpet is a, well, what is it? Uh, it's a Swedish design from the between 70s and 80s. Uh, that's when they started experimenting with uh, fiberglass. So super sturdy fiberglass hole, but with all the beauty of wood, since the cabin top is all mahogany and uh, so is the interior. Yeah. So it makes a beautiful mix. But the design name is called a Vinda. Yeah, and they're not kidding about beautiful. This guy is a bit of a perfectionist, and when Maya joined up with him, she uh, uh, got out to go out and help him sand a lot and help him uh, actually get out and go sailing because I don't think if Maya didn't show up, I don't think he would have ever taken her out sailing. He would have just been sitting there sanding and perfecting yeah, the fiberglass probably. forever. But, He's like, all right, let's go. But he, he, it's nice uh, hanging out with a couple other YouTube sailors because we're just gonna, our idea of a good time is walking the docks and looking at other boats. <laughs> and occasionally filming some things as we go. Yeah. yeah. actually from right around here and Aladino is from Switzerland and Aladino spent a lot of time working at a boatyard so he's got an actual education and a backing and all of this stuff and it's really fun to pass ideas by with him so today I think we're gonna uh, dig into a little bit of what the actual plan is for the sail rig for the cockpit and for the general outlay of the boat so I'm gonna work with you guys and give you some drawings and show you what I'm thinking well, before we get too carried away with boat plans, um, we're gonna enjoy a little bit of the beauty that is Gabriola Island. And this is the elder cedar grove. So we're gonna go give these guys a little bit of a tour because although Maya did come here, you, you didn't get to see a lot of this island while you were here, which is a really big shame. And I've been telling people since I got here, it is a really cool island in the way that I've been here a year and I'm always still finding new trails, new parks, new stuff, so. Also, Motorboat Sam's joined us. Right, Motorboat Sam? <laughs> no, you speedster? I'm a race car. <laughs> He's like, nope, I'm a race car. <laughs> You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically the only stand of trees still standing on Gabriola Island. A lot of these South uh, Gulf Islands were clear cut 100 years ago. And so if you're looking for first growth, this is pretty much it. So it's really a kind of a mystical, beautiful place. It's, uh, the longer you, the trees are around, the stranger they grow. Simon doesn't believe that up here is not long growth. I'm not going over there. My feet aren't that waterproof. Hi, it's a nice tree. It's a nice tree, yeah, I agree. <sighs> Alright, back on the boat now. Still see my breath in here. We've got the wood stove roaring away, but um, it's finally calm out there, so the wood stove is doing its work. We're gonna make a nice hot dinner, we'll make it spicy if we can't make it hot, and at least if it's spicy, we'll pretend it's not as cold as it is. Yeah, so um, I'm going to, when I go home, like learn or All right, as promised, we're going to go through a little bit of the plan for Old Dog. 
Now this is gonna mess with the continuity a bit. This is a couple of days after. It's still bloody cold, and I have opted to do some work indoors at a friend's place just to um, catch up on some editing, do a little online work, and draw you guys some pretty pictures. So, really quickly, I'd like to go through some of the details and the things I've been learning. As you know, I've been studying ever since I got this boat, and it's been a very much study, test, study, test, you know, um, and also I find that you can't learn to swim unless you're in the water. So this is old dog. Now when it comes to laying out a plan, first thing of course you want to lay out is what are your goals? In this case, I wanted a home headquarters. I wanted something that was adventure ready. Um, I wanted to travel around and I wanted to be completely fossil fuel free. For me, going forward, those are the important things. Not performance, not being the best boat that's ever been built. It's just my first boat. I'm gonna figure it out. Keeping those notions in mind, um, you guys remember that I went for the junk rig. For those of you who don't know, junks are Chinese and they're making a bit of a resurgence in the last like 30 or 40 years here in the Western world, um, mainly because of their ease of use, um, their ease of repair, and also their stability in rougher weather. The thing I like particularly about a junk is it's a sail that you can make yourself. It's a sail that um, is very beginner friendly. And it's also a sail that rewards someone who is constantly studying, constantly learning more about it and tweaking it and playing with it. It's not a sail that you just set and forget. It's a sail that you get to play with. On top of those benefits, she's also a self-tacking and self-reefing. That means that in order to tack, all you do is turn your wheel over and you tack. That's it. Um, kind of like just a mainsail, you know, no jib involved. And also she's self-reefing, so she's tied to the mast in multiple points and if you drop the halyard, she drops. Also, because of these battens you see here, each sail is actually a separate panel that you can glue and stitch together. So the lower sails down here, which get reefed first, these ones can be made out of a lighter material. You can make them baggier so they perform better under light wing conditions. And the sails up here, you can make them stiffer, straighter, thicker, and they will act as a storm sail under higher wind conditions. This is especially nice in a catamaran when you want to be reefing for the gusts and not for the consistency. And so you'll be reefing quite often on a junk sail that's very easy. Downsides are a few. First of all, a junk sail tends to be a little bit heavier since you can make them a little bit beamier. In this case, I'm stretching for about 16 feet along my um, boom. Then um, they tend to weigh a little bit more. On top of that, they don't have the greatest windward um, performance. In fact, they don't really have that great of performance in the racing aspect of sails. So this is much more of a motor sailor. If you guys are familiar with SV Seeker, that's exactly why he's going junk too. You know, it's not a um, beating up wind kind of sailboat. It's a leisurely downwind or beam sailing sailboat. And when the wind is against us, we either drop anchor or we fire up, in this case, my electric motors, which brings up the next point. The plan right now for me is to fit 6,600 watts worth of solar on that roof and potentially some wind turbines in the near future. That takes up a fair amount of space. Um, I don't currently have that much space. I only have the space on board right now for eight panels and I need 20 to make up that 6,600 watts. So I'm gonna need a bimini and a big one. Enter in some of these. So the bimini, for those of you who don't know, is a roof that extends over the cockpit area of a boat. Um, a dodger is kind of like the front windshield that sometimes is attached to that bimini, sometimes it's not. I've toyed around with many ways of building my bimini system, but I think now what I'm kind of committed to is making a hard top kind of like the roof on the cabin is already. The thin and lattice worked hard top up here that I can bolt eight more panels to and also support um, the potential for wind turbines and a reefing point for my sheet, which will run right through these posts here forward to my sails. So the idea here is to run another smaller mast without a sail that sits here. Now, 
if she was just to support my bimini, she doesn't have to be all that strong, but because we're gonna be running the sheets of the sail through this point here, um, she's gonna need some significant reinforcements. I'm planning to achieve that reinforcement in part by sinking this mast down below the deck and tying it straight to the transom and the keel in a nice strong point with multiple tie-ins. This will of course strengthen up the whole aft section of the boat which needed some rebuilding and allow me to do a little bit of a redesign. It also gives me space up here to hang davits for a beautiful dinghy. We're just gonna draw real quick the HMS bathtub. There she is, looking beautiful. But forward from here, we also need supports to keep this whole system from flexing too much. So my idea is to laminate Douglas fir strips, not just in this direction, also along the back of the boat, she'll stretch out one towards the inside and one that will meet it on the other side. Not only do I think this will be really beautiful, but it'll also bring in some of that old school Chinese palisade, beautiful quarter deck space that you see on the older junks. Now the idea is to keep this all hollow and allow the breeze to roll through here quite easily because it is so far aft on the boat, you don't want to create too much windage back here. The deck will be partly porous and allow the breeze to roll through both in the aft section of the boat and the forward section of the boat as is typical of these um, warm catamarans. But of course the motor sailor nature of this boat makes it very much not like a warm cat. So we'll have to see how that turns out in the long run. Again, this is a plywood boat, so I get to tweak it all I want for the rest of time, potentially. So that's a very general idea of what I'd like to do on the layout back here. I'd also like to be running some um, decking boards all across here, just to keep this space a little bit more safe, but also let the water slosh off um, if waves come over the bow, it can wash off quickly, as that will be important not to get swamped on deck. It is also gives me a point for which to uh, potentially attach lifelines down the road. Um, I'm not entirely convinced that I'll be needing them just for my current cruising, since I'm only uh, cruising the uh, Gulf Islands for now. But as I prepare to sail some uh, deeper waters, that's something I'll want to look at. I also want to look at the possibility of using a jib further out here and allowing myself to play with that on a stay. Now, the stay is not actually a stay, it's just somewhere for me to haul a jib up to. So for now, I just wanted to give you guys a rough idea of what she's gonna look like a little bit. Um, I am committed so far on the junk sail, although I am talking to some marine architects about um, a sail plan, potentially including, as you can see up front here, a little jib, just to help the boat point a little bit better. Um, it's something I'm toying around with, but it's one of those things I don't think I have to really worry about too, too much just yet. Um, what I do have to worry about is the boom placement and a place for me to run the sheets. So this cockpit back here allows me to have a lot of um, movement of, of the mainsail and allows me to um, kind of customize it a lot more down the road. And that's what I've been spending this winter researching. I wanted to make sure that I didn't close off too many doors and gave myself the opportunity to build a rig that was fairly conservative, fairly um, comfortable, and then tweak it from there and have the space to actually tweak it from there. So. If you guys have any interesting ideas, leave, please leave them in the comments. Um, one thing I am currently worried a little bit about is where to fit four more solar panels in order to get that 6,600 watts I'm aiming at. I'm also looking at the possibility of mounting some wind turbines on those aft masts um, a few feet up from where the sheets run through. So ensuring that uh, those wind turbines conform with my sail plan is gonna be, uh, well, it's gonna be interesting. Either way, I'm very excited to see this thing, have this cockpit sorted out, have a space outdoors where I can, you know, run my table saw and not be in the ocean. I'm also excited for it to be a little bit warmer. Anyway, I'll let you guys go. Thanks for watching and uh, see you tomorrow.